change very quickly after that. Uh, that would be devastating to Europe because the only reason that they have a warm climate is because that current uh, flows north with the heat from the equator and warms up that area. Mm -hmm. If the Atlantic, I, uh, Gulf, what is called the Gulf Stream, were to s uh, slow down or stop, it would be devastating to Europe, unbelievably devastating to them. By uh, 2005, there was no doubt this was occurring, or actually 2004, I think it was, when we figured out that there was, we had enough data then that there's no doubt. It, it was even changing shape because it was slowing down so much. And, um, and I went on to German television, and I told them, you know, you guys are in a lot of trouble, and you must, you, you have to begin to plan. Uh, they became very angry with me. I got all kinds of hate mail and emails and everything else saying I was crazy, didn't know what I was talking about. But I got letters from Sir David King, who is the eminent scientist for, uh, from, uh, out of, uh, under, who was under Tony Blair, who said that every word that we were saying was accurate and true. And, and that he agreed with us, what, what we were saying. And uh, Andrew Marshall, out of the Pentagon, uh, Bush didn't want him to talk and talk about this stuff. But he did it anyway, and he published in um, February 7th of 2004, uh, he published uh, in, uh, what's it called, Fortune magazine, uh, all the secret papers of the Pentagon uh, about weather. He showed how the satellites had only 30-something years ago of what the North Pole looked like, and it's like this, and then he shows it in, uh, in 2004, and it's 42% melted. And the following year after that, the biggest ice shelf at the uh, North Pole broke apart. It was an ocean of water, uh, literally melted and broke apart. You see, as, the, as these minerals run out and they start causing the greenhouse effect and heating up the oceans, um, they start melting the poles. And when the poles start melting, the, the ice at the both the North and the South Pole is fresh water, not salt water. And what drives the, uh, these currents, the motor that drives these currents, is not heat, it's salt. And so if you look at the Atlantic current, it comes up by the equator, and it comes up to the surface, and it's like a hot river flowing on the surface that heads north. And it keeps going north and going north until it gets way up by where up by Greenland, up by the, where the, where as far as it can go, and then it drops to the bottom. And what's dropping to the bottom is the salt. And that's what's pulling the water up. Mm -hmm. That's the motor, is this salt dropping. When it gets to the bottom, it runs along the bottom till it gets back to the north, and the heat rises back up, and then it comes back over the top. So it's a big three-dimensional circle going like this. You might just say a big three-dimensional convection current. Mm -hmm. But it is salt. Without the salt, there can't be any. And, uh, and so as the poles melt and the nor northern currents are flowing billions and billions of gallons of fresh water, the, the ocean near there, the salt density drops. And so this thing doesn't fall as far, and it begins to slow down. And this is how uh, this works. By May of 2005, I had alarmed Europe so deeply that they wanted to prove it, and they, the England sent their submarines to the, up to the, where these currents drop, and they actually measured them. They came back shocked to find that the currents had dropped by 80% of their normal flow. They were only flowing in 2000, May of 2005 by 20% of what they were supposed to be flowing. That triggered the entire European Union to come together and say, we're in trouble, <laughs> because uh, that means that very, very soon uh, the kind of weather that they're experiencing is going to vanish, and it's going to vanish if you go by scientific evidence in three days. It's going to disappear, and all of a sudden they're going to find themselves in an internal winter that they will not see the sun again for 90,000 years. And this is the scenario that we know is going to happen because it's happened hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times in the past before. Time Magazine came back with an entire issue that was a quarter inch thick. It was this huge thing. And they were saying, well, I, that I hadn't figured out the time, the, um, the tree ring theories of what all this is about, meaning that it isn't just the Atlantic Ocean that's breaking down, it's all of them. 
and all, all the currents are beginning to slow down and from this and um, and that means uh, something much bigger than what happened in the 1300s. That, uh, when that begins to happen, that is a true ice age, global, worldwide. And, uh, and you know, uh, Al Gore knows this, but he won't, uh, he won't, he's, he, I think he's afraid to tell the truth, because the truth is scary. The South Pole is what's interesting to me, because uh, there's enough ice in the South Pole to raise the oceans uh, a long ways, close to 200 feet or so. And, uh, and I remember about four years ago when uh, Larsen's ice shelf broke off. Mm -hmm. And that raised the entire world's oceans about maybe a sixteenth of an inch or something. And, uh, but they said, ah, it's no big deal. It, it only was there for 10,000 years. And then those same scientists said, but Larsen's B shelf will, shelf will never break off because it's been there for millions of years. The following year, I think it was, Larson's B shelf broke off. And then they made the statement that it would take six months to melt because it was the size of a state. You know, it's huge. And, uh, um, but it didn't. It, it, it melted in 30 or 45 days, I don't remember. And that raised the entire world's oceans almost an inch. But the, the one that I'm concerned about and, and the scientists that I know are really concerned about is something called Ross's shelf. And that is a piece of ice a couple miles high. And, uh, and right now it's breaking across the back. And I just spoke with one of the scientists that's working on it, and they're freaked because these holes are developing, pools of water melting all over it, and they're going all the way down and eating their way to the bottom where they're finding there's, it's melting completely. It's just rushing water under the bottom. That water's being forced back up, making bigger holes that are melting all the way down the bottom forcing more water up, making bigger holes, and they think it's going to break off. If Ross's shelf breaks off, first of all, that's going to cause a tsunami or a tidal wave like this world's never imagined. If you can imagine a piece of ice two miles high plunging into the ocean, how high is that wave going to be? And with it instantaneously, it's going to raise, the, when it completely melts, it will raise the the entire world's oceans almost 16 feet, and uh, that's already been scientifically calculated. And but 90% of the ice goes in the water me immediately and displaces it. So you're going to have a, I'm just going to guess about 14 feet uh, of the world's oceans rise instantly. And tsunamis coming from everywhere to balance out, and it's going to be a mass destruction like no one's ever ever imagined on this earth. And uh, and almost every coastal city in the world will be underwater. And, uh, and that could happen tomorrow. Seriously, it really could. They can't even uh, measure the cracking anymore because they used to put these cables across one side to the other side. And, uh, and then when they broke, they knew that it was moving. But uh, the, the ice shelf itself is melting 90 feet a year. So to, just to see if it's moving, they have to cut down 90 feet to put the cables just to see one year's of growth because they're going to melt down to that level within by the next year. And so uh, if, that, if that shelf goes, we're going to have a wake-up call and find out what the, what the world scientists are saying. Mm -hmm. It's not just one man making this statement. And, uh, but who doesn't want this? You've got all your corporations, your oil companies, and you, all these big corporations they don't want you to, uh, to. They don't want to stop using oil. They don't want to go into alternative forms of, of, of energy and electricity, which we have. We can replace every single level, and I mean every single level of technology, with le with technologies that are clean and far better, that would do no harm to the earth at all. But you have to remember, even if human humankind was not here, this is going to happen anyway.